are here with Jose Santiago. What did you do today? Uh, I got third at the Connecticut Regional. Lost in the finals, unfortunately, but it happens. All right, bro, you got there. What were you on today? Uh, I played Torto with some interesting cards. So I'm just going to take Roko. Uh, I played Triple Ashna, Triple Hara, uh, uh, Tupa Shooter. Um, I think lately people have been coming, uh, cutting it hard because you don't play Hauk, so the tuner is not as necessary in playing three Vashuda. But Vashuda contributes to your worst hands turn one because two Vashuda really doesn't get you anywhere. Uh, and to coincide, I played double Vessel. Um, Vessel was good. Um, it's better now that Despi is a little worse in the format because um, you can actually resolve it when you uh, summon one of these guys and your monk doesn't get necessarily banished, so you don't like lose a card for no reason. Um, so those were the tennies I played. Uh, for the Sorto cards, uh, Ecclesia. Uh, you gotta play three of this card. It's like two good going second. Um, and not enough people are main decking Nibiru yet to warrant maybe not playing three. Uh, this card's just like really good. It, you have to play it. Uh, three Moe, of course. Uh, three Long One. And I did play two Tai. I wanted to play one of this card um, because um, the hands uh, you, you kind of lose going second is when you open too many normal summons and not enough cards like a Kalija and Long One. Um, but I couldn't bring myself to cut the second one uh, because of desires and um, uh, having it in deck is very important uh, if you need to summon it off the Ecclesia. So like if you draw the one up, it's actually really bad because you typically want to save your normal summon for um, if it gets stopped or you know something along those lines. So two is okay. I bricked on it on the finals, but it is what it is. Uh, sword to card as well, sorry. Three emergence, obviously. And um, one blackout. Uh, I also played Jet Synchron uh, because I did play Hauk. Um, uh, the way I built the deck is I think Sword has like, it has like a low ceiling but a high floor. So I wanted to like up the ceiling of the deck. And I think making Appalooza does that. Um, where in the mirror match you have an advantage going first. Uh, I think some people get like scared in the mirror as well. They don't necessarily want to go first because of how easy it is to break the board. So this just like, this was amazing all day. Uh, if you have Adhara plus a normal summon, you could just like special uh, the Adhara um, and then normal summon Moye and then reveal and then if they imperm there, you can make Hauk, Hauk summon Jet, turn this into a, I play Relinquish Anima, summon this back, make Appalooza and then continue for there if you have more cards. But it was just, it was just good all day. Uh, two Desires, uh, called by best cards in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! And Upstart Goblin. Um, I played uh, 40 cards with Upstart. Um, because I really wanted to see Ash Blossom. I think uh, the games that you see this card, when you have an established board, you will almost never lose. Uh, so I think it was too important to see this uh, game one, and uh, if you go first. So I wanted to maximize on the potential to do that by playing these type of cards and playing a lower deck count. I played three Imperm um, and three Droplet as defensive cards. Um, I don't actually think you need too many defensive cards right now. I know the Punk Theory on deck is like really popular and it puts an impressive board up. Um, but this deck's really good at going second inherently, and you only really lose when you see like multiples of cards you can only use one. So that's it. and I made that one dimensional barrier. This is gonna seem really weird, uh, but the thought process behind maining one is again the deck doesn't have a lot of auto wins game one. So by playing one dimensional barrier, you give yourself a chance to see it game one, an 11% chance. If you resolve the Moe drop two combo, you give yourself uh, around a 23% chance to see it. And the games that you do see it, you will auto win. But it doesn't contribute to your bad hands going second because you don't play multiple. So if you were to draw this going second, you have one D barrier and the rest of your cards are playable. Whereas if you play three D barrier, it contributes to you seeing multiple going second and not being able to break boards. So I think one D barrier in this deck is actually proper and it makes a lot of sense and it was a great all day. I mean, I only drew it twice, but when I drew it like, that, that, that's why you play it because you're gonna draw it 23% of the time when you drew the draw two and that amounts to some versions of games you'll win. Um, maybe when they open like, uh, super poly and things of that nature. So this card was insane. Like just playing one of it just makes complete sense to me. Uh, for the extra, uh, two Shi Zhao, uh, Berserker, uh, Vaxia, Yazi, Chao Fang, uh, just standard Baron, Sinister, Cheng Ying, uh, two Monk. Um, I'm like debated going back and forth uh, as far as like playing three, and I think it comes up in the mirror match. But another matchup's not necessarily because you kind of just kill them. You put them to low enough life where the third monk never comes up. You just kind of put your monsters to attack position and poke them. I played Hauk, uh, Anima, and Appalooza. Um, this was insane. Um, 
I think the deck needed something like this, and I don't think enough players are playing it. Uh, this is really good. I played Anima instead of Link Rebo because it just makes no sense to play Link Rebo when you can play Anima and it comes up. I summoned this card twice. Uh, where I tried to steal something, one time it got negated, the other time it resolved. Uh, but Link Rebo would have done nothing in those instances, so Anima just makes complete sense. So that was the thought process behind that. Um, for the side deck, I played two Nibiru, uh, two Foolish Return, shout out to Noah. He was on this before like uh, anyone else was. Uh, three Dark Ruler, I think this card has to be in everyone's side deck uh, for the break uh, my board type decks. Um, it's really good into the Scythe because um, they're not Scything you in standby phase now. They have to wait till main phase or battle phase because of uh, the way Hauk works. Um, so this card is just like insane. You have to play it right now. I play one reboot. It's really good in the mirror. Uh, you put it in against Despia because they're going to play D barrier and ignorant cards against you. If you draw it, you draw it. It is what it is. I play one more D barrier, uh, three anti spell, which is like. It's just, this card's insane. Like. Yeah. The math on you drawing it post side when you when you draw two is, I think it's over 50% or around 50%. So you're just gonna win a lot of those games. I played three evenly matched for the mirror too. Um, a lot of players go for the draw two combo and also evenly matched is really good because if they set barrier against you, you can hope to live by uh, evenly them and then hopefully they don't have like too much follow up or you have, you have like a hand trap as well. Um, so it's good in those instances as well. And of course it's good against back row decks and things of that nature. Um, yes, that was the deck. Any shout outs? Yeah, shout out my team, uh, Rocky Mountain Collectibles. Uh, shout out to everyone I test with, uh, a lot of people. Um, uh, that's a lot of people. That's a lot of shout, out. <laughs> shout out to Felix for driving me, all my friends. Hey, Felix. Locals, um, and I'll see everyone at Nats. All right. Deuces.